Today, I want to talk to you about the force of prayer. We're in 21 days of prayer, and we've been talking about prayer, and our prayer initiative is we're going to pray for, our, for the presence of God to be more evident in our church. We're praying for our church family, Epic Life, and we're praying for our nation, and, and we've got to understand the power of prayer. We've been talking about push Pray until something happens. How many of you this last week, if you're in the room or if you're online, that you've been pushing in prayer? You're praying until, just wave at me, until something happens. Well, did you know that prayer is a force? Did you know that when you pray, your prayer has the potential to, for God to move on your behalf? Your prayer of faith has the ability to move mountains. Let's read about this in Mark 11, 22. Jesus talks about a mountain moving prayer. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins. So God is, and Jesus is making sure we understand that we need to ask forgiveness and we need to repent. Why? Because when we pray, prayer is a force. And we activate the hand of God to move on our behalf. So we need to make sure that we are in right standing with God. Prayer is a force. Prayer is a battle plan. You might be surprised to find out that the most lethal weapon in your arsenal isn't a re- uh, is not revenge. It's not a firearm. It's not even a lawsuit. The greatest weapon you have is prayer. And the Bible talks about putting on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the enemy. And prayer is one of the most powerful weapons that you and I have. It's a weapon that the enemy has absolutely no defense for and he cannot stop. Prayer is a secret weapon that will expose the enemy and reveal to you the strategy the enemy is forming against you to attack you and your family. Remember, he can form the weapons, but they will not prosper. So when we pray, we are asking God to expose the strategies of the enemy that is forming to attack you and your family. How many of you know prayer is important and prayer is a force? It is a battle plan. And prayer, if I was to find any really good definition, and I've studied a lot of definitions about prayer, I love this one here, and I'm going to put it on the screen. I believe it's going to come up on the screen. You can screenshot it. You can write it down. But prayer is the divinely authorized authorized mechanism that God has given us to access heaven for his intervention on earth. Prayer is the divinely authorized mechanism that God has given us to access heaven for his intervention on earth. Prayer as believers is not the last resort. It's the first response. We pray. Our first response to anything is Prayer. And once we learn how to pray, we begin to pray every day. And prayer just becomes a part of our everyday life. My mother, she's not here today, but she has incorporated prayer over her 82 years of life to where it, she just, anything, and she's breathing prayer. She walks through, you know, her backyard and, and there's a little ant, Jesus, 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 Jesus. If she sees anything that's a little off in the name of Jesus, I mean, she's incorporated. If she's driving down the road and, and, and I'm, or I'm driving, she's riding next to me and she thinks I'm going too quick. She's just Jesus, 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 Jesus. (laughs) Right. And so, so she's incorporated prayer into every day, every moment of her life. So the more we allow prayer to be intentional and a first response, it just becomes our natural response. And prayer is a central practice of believers. Why? Why do I need to pray? Jesus lives in my heart. That's good. I've been bought and, and you know, adopted in and grafted in and, and all my sins are forgiven and I have an eternity in heaven. Why do I need to pray? Because prayer will build your faith. Prayer will develop authority. 
Prayer is asking God for greater wisdom, for healing, for miracles, for breakthrough, for provision. But we can't just ask. We need to seek and knock. See, prayer is that open door relationship with God. It's that divine mechanism that allows God to come down on earth and work in your life. But we pray a certain way. We pray and we ask and we seek and we knock. Because if faith without works is dead, then asking without seeking and knocking is just as lifeless. It's not enough for us to just ask, well, I prayed about it. No, you need to pursue what God is, is, is asking you to pursue. You need to keep knocking until those doors open. And, and it's a determined faith. We've talked about the woman who was the, the woman that had an issue and she went to the judge and her persistent faith got the miracle that she needed. She wouldn't give up. She, she even got a little violent to the point where the judge said, I don't even know this woman, but I'm going to give her what she's asking before she comes back and attacks me. Some of us need to get that excited and that upset and frustrated that what you're believing God to do has not happened yet and get out of that apathetic place of like, well, if it happens, it happens. Well, if that's how you want to live your life, praise God. But if I'm dying, don't pray for me. I need somebody that'll walk in and say, you'll live and not die. I've seen him do it. We sang about it. I've seen him do it. He can do it for you. My faith is alive. My authority is alive. Why? Because I pray. I'm a person of prayer, and, and it's, it's determined, active faith to bring the promises of Jesus into the earth. Let's start with Jesus' promise in Matthew 7. He says, ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. To him who knocks, it will be open. So you and I, we ask him. We thank him for it, and then we keep praising him until we see that prayer answered. You know, I've had moments in my life that I prayed one time, and it showed up. I, got, I got, kind of got used to that. I kind of thought, that's how God always does. If I want it bad enough and I pray, he'll just show up. The older I get, the more I realize it's not always the way God works. As a matter of fact, when he's wanting to do the greatest things for you, he doesn't always just show up you know, on your doorstep and in your mailbox. And he's not Santa Claus or he's not the lottery. All right. He's not the casino where we just kind of put a quarter in and hope for the best. That's not who God is. God has allowed us to have a relationship with him through prayer and to ask and to seek and to knock. And it's beyond asking. It's this, the journey and the process of seeking and knocking that actually gets it done. Yeah, that's right. Maybe your marriage is struggling or something in your life that you've been dealing with for a long time. Finances, you can't seem to come out of it and you just keep losing your breath. And maybe it seems like your, your, the, your knees just keep getting knocked out under you. And it's a cycle and a pattern of lack, a cycle and a pattern of just not being able to overcome it. And I'm believing for you today, if you'll lean in to the seeking and the knocking, don't quit praying, but start seeking and knocking. Get educated on what you're asking God to do. Get, I, I, I was talking to someone earlier that they were believing God for a, a large payout to come. And they said, I am waiting and it might be two years, it might be five years, but I'm preparing. I'm learning all about money. I'm learning all about what to do when it comes. I'm learning. I'm talking to lawyers. I'm talking about trust. See, that, that, what is that? That's beyond asking. That's seeking and knocking. Now I'm preparing for the overflow. I'm preparing. I'm not going to just say, God, I just would, I wish my husband would have a stronger relationship with you. No, what I'm going to say is we're coming to church on Monday nights and we're going to sit in the connect group and we're going to watch the chosen together and our whole family is going to be discipled together. Yes. We're making that determination. Don't, don't, don't get lazy because you prayed and then frustrated because you don't see an answer. Don't be apathetic about the promises of God, the things that you want when you're really in a tight squeeze. Don't make, don't make your life have to be from tight squeeze to tight squeeze. So you need wisdom. You need to be discipled. You need to go beyond miracles. We talked about miracles, and I love that God can do miracles, but you and I have to walk in, an, in a relationship with God that we don't just need to live, and if a miracle don't happen, we're not going to make it. That's not God's will for your life. God doesn't want you to live from miracle to miracle. He wants you to have wisdom. 
And then the miracles that come are just the gravy on top of what God is doing in your life. And God wants to do that in you. It's asking, seeking, and knocking. This is a promise that everyone who keeps on asking receives. He who keeps on seeking finds. He who keeps on knocking the door will be open. So just desire his will. We're not asking God to do something outside of his will. I'm not asking God to do something that is sin or out of God's will. I want God's perfect will. I don't want God's side will. I don't want God's will that he had to just say, well, I had something better, but we'll work with this one. No, that's not what I want. I want God's perfect will for my life. So I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep seeking. I'm going to keep knocking. And eventually I'll receive the promise. If I'm asking God to do something that he's given me the ability to do, how many of you know I'm probably not going to see it? I'm not going to wake up and say, God, just remove all the calories and the fat and the sugar from the donut and the Big Mac I'm going to eat. <laughs> no, right? I'm going to make a chocolate cake, but I'm believing God as I eat my third piece <laughs> that acid reflux will not repeat on me in Jesus' name. No, I have to do my part. I have to do my part and God will do his part because prayer is a force and prayer is a force that will transform you. See, as you're praying, you understand that there is a force that will transform your life. Prayer pushes the reset button. Prayer is the place where transformation begins. Transformation starts in your mind. This part right here, I, I've been wanting to preach this for a while. You're going to like this part right here. I want you to lean in and, and, and really hear what I'm about to say because prayer transforms your thoughts. Okay? Your mind and your thought life can be very powerful. And our minds and our thought life are powerful ways that you and I honor and obey God. Or they can be powerful strongholds that keep us from experiencing everything God has for us. Your mind is that gatekeeper. It's that place that you allow God to renew your mind. And you don't have a fixed mindset, but you have a faith mindset. Or you decide, I've got a fixed mindset. And now it becomes a powerful stronghold, doubt, negativity, worry, fear, has now created a stronghold in your mind. And your thought life is not obeying and honoring God. It's actually dishonoring and disobedient based on the thoughts that you think. And you'll, you'll find that your thought life can keep you from experiencing everything God has for you. There are people that think things that are just not true. You can't convince them. We live in a world like that today that's off the, the rails with delusion. Just don't understand. I'd rather hear you wrong. I'd rather be offended. I'd rather, instead of being corrected, I'd rather hear what you didn't even say and be offended. And, and, then, and I'm telling you, offense will rob you of your destiny. See, prayer will begin to open you up. God, what is it that's in my thought life that's not true, that's not real, that I have allowed my thoughts to conform and shape around something that's not true and it's not pleasing. And now I'm not experiencing everything that God has for me. And if that's you today, I want to help you because your thoughts will impact your life. Your thoughts will impact the quality of your marriage. Your thoughts will impact your health and your finances, your children, your relationships. So it's so critical that we obey what God has told us to do in his word. If his word says it, that's what we do. Why? Because we need, our, we need transformation in our lives. We need our marriages to be transformed. We need our relationships. Anybody would say, I need that in my life. Yes. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be what? transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, don't let the way of the culture, don't let negative people around you, don't let just negative thoughts stay in your mind. Reframe the thoughts of your mind because what you think or how you see something and the way you perceive something can deceive you. See, we're talking about prayer today, and I'm believing over the next few days, God's going to begin to kind of shake off some cobwebs in your mind, cause you to see things you didn't see before. As you're praying, let me help you understand. When two people perceive the same situation, they can see it differently. Have you ever had a situation like that where we're all sitting around talking and you think the conversation was great and somebody else walks away and go, did you hear what they said? 
can you believe? What? I, what are you talking about? And you can actually observe the same situation and other people will see it differently than you do. Other people will have a completely different observation than you. So, so it's, it, they can reach conclusion that's very different just by using the same thinking process. We're all thinking. We're all using our brains. But somehow, we have different perspectives or perceptions of what happens. So here's an example. Imagine you see a young woman, and she's running down the road, and she's screaming bloody murder. And behind her, you see a man with a big stick and he's coming after her and he's running at full speed and he's holding a stick. And you look at that situation and you conclude that now this man is chasing this woman and he wants to hurt her. That's what you would think. But someone else who was watching the same scenario from another part of the street sees something different. They don't just see a woman screaming and a man behind her with a big stick. They actually see a rabid dog chasing both of them running down the street, snarling, and now we see it from a different perspective. See, perspective matters. Perception matters. What we think matters because what we think is happening is not really what's happening. We're responding to things that it's not even really happening the way we perceive. That's why we've got to keep praying. That's why we have to keep seeking, get wisdom, get knowledge, get understanding. That's why we keep knocking. We keep growing in our faith. I'm not giving up because you know what? From asking to receiving, there's a whole process of things I need to grow before God can do it for me. Now, if you're asking for something that is, is you know, the same request, Lord, pay my bills, Lord, put gas in my car, there'll always be somebody that'll help you and, and it'll feel like a miracles. But God wants to take you above that, beyond that. He wants to take you to where now you're looking for somebody to help pay their bills. You're looking for somebody. How do I, how, how can I help this person and fill up their tank? See, God wants you to move from prayer to asking and seeking, knocking and seeking. Did you know that studies will show that as much as 90% of the errors made by people who take tests are errors of perception? Anybody have, don't raise your hand, but poor reading comprehension? Like I was one of those people that I got it until I had to take a test and then I just bombed. Anybody else like that? Like I know I know algebra. I don't know algebra. I had a teacher, a math teacher. She was so, you know, just smug. I, that's how I felt. And she just had like that. Remember, we used to have, what is it, those transparency boards? And she'd have a little transparency machine. And she always had red marker all the way down her arm because she was writing and it was smearing. And she'd write the problem and she'd write the equation and she'd write it. And at 20 different steps. And I'm like, I got it. And she's talking to us like, you're an idiot if you don't understand this because I'm a brilliant teacher. See? See how easy it is? And this goes there in the see? You see? I'm like, yes, I see. I got it. I got it. Give me the test right now. F. Why? Because from hearing to perceiving, there was a gap. I heard it and I thought I heard right, but I didn't. And unfortunately, they don't give you credit for, you know, trying. They give you credit for getting it right. Well, I got nine out of the 20 steps, right? Don't matter. I got 19 out of the 20 steps. No, you got one wrong. And so you and I need to pray so we can get the mind of Christ so that we're not shaped by the world making decisions that we are, that we, because we believe something that's not true. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How do you see your problems? What, what do you believe? What do you perceive God can do in your life? Isaiah says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. There is a prophetic now that's happening. There's the sound of now. There's the faith of now. And you and I can jump into the now if we'll determine I'm not wasting one more day wavering in unbelief. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask. I'm going to seek. I'm going to knock. And I'm going to keep praising God until I see the answer. Do you see your situation from a natural perspective or do you see what God sees? Do you see your problem it's, and it's overwhelming you and it's causing fear and anxiety? Or do you see your circumstance from heaven's vantage point? Do you see that lost relationship as God trying to punish you? Or do you see that, or do you see it as God's protection? 
Are you looking at the job loss as God positioning you for something greater? Or are you seeing it from a place of panic and you feel hopeless and afraid? The Bible says I'm doing something new. Now it springs forth. You have the choice to believe God. If you move this away from me, that just means there's something better coming. And I choose to have the right thoughts, the right perspective, and the right declaration until I see the promise come to pass. Is this helping anybody today? I'm, I'm almost finished. Prayer and fasting is a force, and prayer and fasting will transition you to trust. You and I have got to trust what God shows us. You and I have got to trust him. He's going to show you things when you spend time with him. We've got to learn that if you're going to get anything from God, you've got to trust him because God's ways are higher than yours. They're bigger than yours. And when you trust God, you stop worrying so much about things you can't control. How do I know I'm not trusting God? Because I'm agitated. I'm worried. I'm frustrated. I'm picking a fight with people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just mad. I'm not in a place of faith. I'm now worried. But when you really start trusting God, you stop trying to protect yourself. You start recognizing that God's big enough to protect you. His blood covers you. He covers you with the feathers of his wings. You're like a little, you're like a little bird and God just comes around you and covers you. That's what you look like from heaven's vantage point. You're covered. His blood covers. He's a strong tower. He's a refuge. He is a strength. A mighty fortress is our God. So we don't operate in the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And today, if you're worn out, I want you to listen to God's promise over you. Isaiah 40, 31. Some of you, you've been in the fight and we're in the middle of this 21 days. And as you pray every day, you need to know you've actually picked a fight with the devil. Don't be afraid. God's building your faith. He's building your authority. You're going to begin to see demons flee all out of your house, out of your mind. You're going to begin to see things happen and favor coming to your house. Stay in the fight. And Isaiah 40, 31 gives us this promise. If you're tired, if you're worn out in the battle, it says, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If you wait on the Lord, you're going to get strength. Waiting is not just sitting around. It's not just hoping. No, waiting is expectation. I'm waiting. God, I'm believing. I'm staying in the fight. It hasn't happened yet, so I'm waiting. And while I wait, just like when I went to a restaurant and, and the waiter or the server comes up and says, how can I help you? And I give them whatever it is that I want and they go get it and bring it back. I might have to wait, but while I'm waiting, I'm serving. While I'm waiting, I'm looking for something. God, how can I be a blessing? My miracle hasn't shown up yet. I'm still in the asking and the seeking and the knocking phase. But while I'm waiting, God, where, where do you need me? Where can I be a blessing? Who needs encouragement today? What can I do to be a blessing to somebody else? Can I tell you, it's really just this simple. I know many times we want to just find somebody to give $350 to, to sit down and talk for an hour and a half about all of our problems that they cannot. Have you ever been to a counselor and you're like an hour in and you're, now you've borne your whole problem, everything, and you're sitting there crying and you're, you're like, I, I just got started in and they go, well, our time's about up now. <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm now regurgitating everything. I'm just in, I'm, I'm just in eighth grade. I got to get to 10th grade for you. Like I just started explaining all back from my childhood. I can't be done now. Like, well, we'll get to this next week. <laughs> How am I going to get home? <laughs> I'm an, I am a ball of anxiety. No, what? No. See, the, here's the good news. Jesus never, never treats you like that. Yeah. There's never a button he pushes. There's never a time's up on the timetable of Jesus. He's like, what you got? Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. I'm going to give you rest. And maybe, maybe you, come on, let's give God the praise. And if you'll wait on me, if you'll serve while you wait, if you'll be faithful while you wait, 
I will renew your strength. I believe that there is a time of refreshing coming for someone in this house today. And God is just requiring, he said, I just need you to wait on me. I just need you to stop worrying. I just need you to trust me because I'm about to do something that's going to change everything. But I don't need you to get weary in the waiting. I want you to wait with expectation. I want you to stir up your faith to stay in the fight. I want you to stay faithful in a culture where everybody's walking out. I want you to stay. I want I'm teaching you some staying power. I'm teaching you that everything that you speak, you might not see it in the natural, but something's happening, happening in the supernatural realm. And you just need to stay in a place of prayer. But many of us, we just stay in a place of, of like just flapping around. As a matter of fact, ornithologist, I practice that too. Or, or, ornithologist. Okay. Bird people. <laughs> bird people say that birds have three methods of flight. Some of them flap consistently to keep their wings in constant motion. Like a, a hummingbird, they, they are constantly counteracting gravity. So a hummingbird is just constantly in flight, just flapping. Flapping will keep them in the air, but it's a lot of work. The second thing that birds do is gliding. They glide and the bird will actually build up so much speed that they'll coast downward a while and it's a lot more graceful than flapping, but it doesn't get the bird very far. And then eventually gravity will set in and gliding is nice, but it doesn't last. But the third way is soaring. And only a few birds, eagles being one of them, are capable of catching rising currents of warm air, thermal winds that go straight up from the earth and without moving a feather can soar up to great heights. Did you know that eagles have been clocked at up to 80 miles per hour without flapping at all? I just love that they soar on these invisible columns of air. Some of us have been flapping. We've spent years flapping. Some of us, we just flap everywhere. (laughs) We're just running here and there. We're just going everywhere. We're just flapping, trying to make something happen, trying to make God uh, appreciate us or see us or someone. We're worried about so many things. We're just trying to stay in the air. We're just trying to make ends work. We're just trying to get to church. I'm just trying to get to work. I'm, I'm trying to take care of the kids. And, and then some of us have been gliding through life, trying to get to where we want to go. I'll get there one day. But if we're being honest, we've not gotten very far and we're worn out. Some of us have just been gliding. Some of us have been flapping. I don't know about you. I think it's time we put our trust in the Lord. I I think it's time to let the Holy Spirit renew our strength. It's time to just be like that eagle. Mount up with wings like eagles. I don't want to flap. I don't want to glide. I want to soar. I want to soar. That's what God, see, that's the kind of strength God wants to give you. That's what God can do. That's what we're asking God for when we pray and we ask him for renewed strength. God, we need renewed strength. There's so much I could teach you about prayer and we've got more to come about prayer and the armor and all of that. We don't have time for it today, but I just feel like this is a great place to just let it sit with with you for a little bit. Imagine what your life can look like if if you will wait on the Lord. Stop worrying. Stop being anxious. Put your trust in Him. Let Him renew you. Let Him renew your strength. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. And here's the rest. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, to wait. See, that's what we're going to pray these next few days. God, teach us. I'm praying for some things. I'm asking you to do some things. But instead of asking you, Lord, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I trust in you. You've made promises to me, so I'm going to wait. You've been good to me, I'm going to wait. Not really asking for anything else, Lord. I'm just going to wait. See, that's the first one. I'm I'm waiting on you because I need your presence first. Before I do anything, Lord, I need I need your presence. This week, just ask the Holy Spirit for His presence. God, while I'm getting dressed, while I'm brushing my teeth, and what whatever it is I'm doing, Lord, I need your presence. Help me be aware 
of your presence. There's people in this room today that maybe you've never really felt the presence of God. You've never encountered the presence of God. You don't really know if God's real or not. Ask the Lord to make himself real to you. You could be young, you could be middle-aged, you could be older, whatever that is, wherever stage of life, God, I wanna wait on you. I need you to reveal yourself to me. Let your presence come. God, I need your presence. God is faithful to show up to those who will pray. He's faithful to come, to renew your strength. Stop flapping. Stop just gliding. Start soaring. Father, I thank you today for everyone in this room that's heard this message, those who are watching online. And this message is a moment in time that's right on time to remind us, God, I'm reminding myself that if I wait on you, I don't have to trust in my ability and my strength. I don't have to move outside of God's will for my life to make the things I'm dreaming about happen. God, if I'll just wait on you, you are storing up treasures. There's things that you're doing that's going to absolutely overwhelm me when the time comes and the blessing comes. And until that moment, God, what is it you're asking of me? I want to serve you. I want to wait with expectation. I don't want to just live from breakthrough to breakthrough, miracle to miracle. I want to have a relationship with God. I want to pray with authority, pray with faith. I want to pray and mountains move. Like Jesus, you said what happened. You said if we would have just a little bit of faith, mustard seed faith, it's the smallest seed of all the grains and it's so small. You use that, Jesus as a way to show us, illustrate that if we'll just have that little bit of faith, we could say to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and it will be done. That little seed is all we need. So today I pray that people in this room would begin to develop the seed that's already inside of them. The seed of faith that's in you. Stop looking at what hasn't happened. Stop worrying about what won't happen, what you are afraid won't happen, and begin to pull on that seed. Begin to water that seed with faith. I believe I've got enough faith to move mountains. Nothing is too difficult for my God. Nothing is too hard. Nothing is impossible. My God is able. My God is able. I thank you today as we declare, as we focus, meditate on your word. God, you're causing us to soar. We're soaring above it all. Renew strength today. If you need your strength to be renewed, would you lift your hand? Is there anyone that just says, I need more strength for the battle? I know God's going to bring me through it, but pray for strength. Father, I thank you that you're renewing strength today in this room. Strength. Strength. I pray that the Spirit of God would just literally rush over you, breathe over you strength. As you read God's Word, as you meditate, as you rehearse, as you put on your you version every day and just listen and hear the Word of God, strength is being renewed. For those that are struggling financially and you're worried about finances, I thank you, Father, that there's strength for the battle. Strength to stay in it until we see increase. We're on our way to greater days. We're on our way to greater days. I pray, Father, we would take this journey and build our authority, build our faith. Keep asking, seeking, knocking, being strengthened in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want to continue to pray for anyone in this room. If you're away from God, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you're here today and you would say, I need, I need to put him first. I, I need to surrender, submit my life to him. Some of you have been running your own way and it's not working out. Can I tell you, it's never gonna work out. I don't know how many times you've tried. I don't know how many times you've prepared to keep trying to go your own way. It is a waste of time. The world, the sin, the culture, it will only bring you back a full circle. It'll bring you right back to the feet of Jesus because you need him now. Don't waste one more moment. Surrender now. Serve him now. Say yes now. We're not promised tomorrow. There's forgiveness of every mistake. I don't care how bad. I don't care how far away you've gotten from God. There is forgiveness right here, right now that's being offered. And all you need to do is say, Jesus, forgive me. Come into my life and change me. 
I want to make you Lord of my life. Is there anyone in this room that would say, that's me, would you pray for me? I'm not going to ask you to get up. No one's looking around. I just want to see your hand. If you would say, pray for me. I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Is there anybody in this room today? Come on, be bold. Be bold, lift it up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I want us to say this out loud, all of us. Let's pray this together. Say, dear Jesus, today I surrender my life. I give you everything. I give you my life. I thank you, Jesus, that you died on a cross to forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that I am forgiven. Jesus, come into my heart. Transform my life. I give everything to you. I believe that I am a child of heaven. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we just thank God for transformation? Can we thank Him for transformation? Come on, why don't you stand up on your feet? And let's thank God for changed lives. Come on, let's give Him praise. Come on, if you are blessed today, give God the praise.